Howdy friends, my name is Wes Lee. Thanks for stopping by the House of Tone today. I started a YouTube channel showing what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you stopping by. It's been a good week, busy week. I think the last time I checked in with you we were working on tubas. We're taking a little break from the tubas today. I've got a specialty clarinet problem. I'm going to show you a cool tool, how about that? Alright, let's jump right into it. So what I've got going on today is this clarinet that has a lot of sentimental value. However, we lost the barrel. So I sourced another barrel. I'm going to get this all fixed up. I've got a cool boroscope tool and we're going to go in and we're going to look at the bump that we have. Okay, here we go. Inside the horn using a boroscope. So that's your octave pip there and we're cruising on up the white line you can see is protruding out and that is the bump that we want to remove and if you look down the line further where it matches better that's where the mouthpiece is in the top of the barrel and you can see what lime scale looks like when it's built up inside the instrument and needs to be clean but this is all smooth and then we're going to back back out and that bump right there that's the problem and that's what we're going to be addressing this is a really cool tool on the one side it measures about 14.4 millimeters enlarging to 14.9 millimeters and on the other side it's 15 millimeters to a 15 point, oh, come on here, get it, Wes. About 15.68, 15.69. How this works is it's graduated steps. So on our horn side, we're going to drop this in and you go till it stops. And this particular goes all the way to the end and it's tight right there. And that's where you stop, is where it's tight. Now we're gonna check the barrel, the bottom side of our barrel. We're gonna loosen up the brass sleeve a little bit. We're gonna drop it down so that it makes full contact. Now we slowly ease down and we let the piece come to rest and then we lock it down. Now we're going to use this other cool tool. It's flat on this side and then it's a reamer on this side. It's very, very sharp. This is a very, very precision tool. This is plastic. This is real sharp. So it's not going to take much effort. Even on a wooden, it doesn't take much effort. You go in ever so lightly and you're just shaving off material a little bit at the time. You can see that I just took a little bit. Now we're going to set this and we're going to recheck it. This is all about when you're doing this work, it's very little movements, but see, we went from about here to here in one pass. Sharp tools do a really good job. Okay, let's go back in and let's make another pass. Bring it in ever so gently. And see, we've got the finest of chips. And let's check it again. Place it down. Tighten up. We're getting close. We're almost there. Let's go one more time. Clean my chips off of here. And 
Let's check. Oh, so close. Drop the brass piece in. Let this go. Look at there. Push the brass piece in. Let this seat. Let this drop till it seats. It just seats under its own weight. And then pull it out and check it. We're right there at the end. Now let's just check it against this down and let that seat. Okay, you want to go see it in the boroscope again? Let's check it out. Okay, now you can see that we've gotten it cleaned and as we're approaching, notice how that line blends so much better this time. And you can actually see where the tool was working and we'll go in and polish that out. But all of the lime and scale is gone from the instrument. And notice how that ridge is no longer there. It really blends in well and follows the taper. Both of them do. So this is a great tool for this repair. Since I have my measurements inside correct and I have my bore going and tapered the way that I want, I'll pull the rings, get them plated up. This one will be good to go back to the customer for the third generation of player. So that example was pretty straight ahead. Now I'm going to show you another one. If you have an upper joint that you're measuring and it is in between the lines. So if we were to go down and lock this, we would see that this is in between. What happens in this situation, we measure our bore size. We measure where it is on the tool, and then we would take our reamer and ream it into the barrel until it was this size. You just use your calipers to make your measurements and make your marks. Well, all right, that's all there is to making the bore on the barrel to the upper joint match up. Remember, take away these tips, small increments, light passes. Go slow. Let the cutters do the work. You'll be golden. Check your measurements often. Golden. If you have a wood horn, you'll want to seal it back up and then oil the bore. And that's it. Okay? I appreciate you dropping by the House of Tone today. I will put the part numbers down in the description and a link to Faree's tools so that you can chat them up and get yourself some of these if you need. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for commenting. I love interacting with everyone this way. This is Wesley, signing out.